Mod chips for the original Xbox have been around for nearly as long as the console itself. And while over the years there have been a slew of options to choose from, most of them run on old, obsolete hardware with proprietary software. Unfortunately, there isn't really a community-driven open source mod chip for the Xbox, that is until now. This is the Mod XO, created by Shellax, an open source, Raspberry Pi Pico-based mod chip for the OG Xbox that's truly a game changer. So, let's check it out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I am super excited to show you a brand new project for the original Xbox that's really gonna be a game changer. This is the Mod XO, pronounced Mod Show. It's an all new Raspberry Pi Pico based mod chip for the Xbox created by a modder from Mexico named Shellax. It functions like most mod chips that came before it, except for one minor detail. It's open source and community driven, meaning this may be the last mod chip we'll ever need. You see, mod chips for the Xbox to date have been closed source and used proprietary software. Additionally, many of these older mod chips now utilize obsolete hardware, which are reaching the end of life or are no longer supported, which is what tends to happen with closed source projects over time. At one point, Shellax actually tried to build his own Xenia mod chip, but ultimately failed. So he thought he would try to make a new mod chip from all the spare Raspberry Pi Picos he had lying around from some of his other projects. He spent a week learning about the Pico's capabilities as well as the LPC implementation on the Xbox. And shortly thereafter, the Mod Show mod chip was born. It wasn't long after that he joined forces with Team Resurgent, a very well-known developer group in the Xbox modding community, responsible for projects like Pandora and Repackinator. The Mod Show has now become a full-blown project with tons of possibilities thanks to the Raspberry Pi Pico's hardware. I think we're going to see a lot of really cool things come from this new mod chip. And obviously, one of the great things about the project is that all you need to make your own mod show is the Raspberry Pi Pico itself and just a few 100 ohm resistors. Or you could grab something like this, a custom designed carrier board for the RP2040 Tiny, which is essentially a smaller Pico board. This one here was created by Modsville USA, a really cool modder. He actually makes other legacy mod chips for the Xbox and PS2, among other things, so definitely check out his store, which I'll have linked down below. Using Modsville's carrier board will allow us to have a cleaner, more professional insulation, but again, you can simply use a standard Pico if you want and just wire it directly to the Xbox's LPC. Anyway, let's dive right in and check out what this new mod chip is all about. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you everything I'll be using to set up my Xbox with this new mod chip. Then I'll demonstrate how to install and set it up step-by-step, step, go over all of its features, review the pros and cons, discuss the exciting future of this project, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is that pretty much everything I'll be using in this video is a prototype and that the mod show itself is still in development. This is just an early look at the hardware and software, so definitely expect things to change and be sure that you're subscribed to the channel as I'll be following this project closely and be doing follow-up videos showcasing updates. Okay, anyway, the first thing that you'll need to do this mod is a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now the one I'll be using is a RP2040 Tiny Board, which is simply a shrunken down version of the original Pico. It comes with this breakout USB-C board, as well as a ribbon cable to connect the two together, which we'll need in order to flash the custom software to the Pico. And of course, like I discussed earlier, to connect the Pico to the Xbox, I'll be using this carrier board, which was custom designed by Modsville USA. It comes with all the necessary 100 ohm resistors already installed, as well as a nice LED indicator light. Modsville actually went ahead and made this board open source, so you can go ahead and make one yourself by heading over to his GitHub page, which I'll have linked down below. And lastly, we have these header pins that I'll solder onto the Xbox LPC so that we can connect the mod chip to the motherboard. Now I have to give a huge shout out to Modsville USA who sent all this over to the channel so that I can show you guys this amazing new mod. Definitely give him some love and check out his store as well as his YouTube channel, both of which I have linked down below. 
All right, so that's everything I'll be using for this install. Now, before I get into showing you how to set up the Mod Show, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, now let's go ahead and install the Macho into the Xbox. All right, so the first thing we need to do is build the Macho chip. Again, I'm using a custom carrier board for this. All we need to do is solder in our RP2040 tiny board to the carrier, which I'll demonstrate right now. Okay, now that the Pico is soldered onto the carrier board, we can go ahead and grab our Xbox motherboard, which I've already removed. Since I'm installing this into a 1.0 motherboard, I'll need to remove the solder from the LPC through holes. If you have a newer Xbox revision motherboard, you won't have to do this. Okay, once the LPC is all cleaned out, I'm gonna go ahead and install the header pins. Make sure they are oriented like this, starting from pin one. Pin 15 and 16 are left empty in this case. I'm just putting a piece of tape to hold them in while I flip the board over so that I can solder them in place. And since we have the motherboard out, it's always good practice to remove the clock capacitor. These have a tendency to leak, and thankfully this one here isn't too bad, but we can see that it has indeed already started leaking. So let's take it out. Since we're installing a mod chip and loading a custom BIOS, we don't need to replace the clock capacitor with a new one. And here you can see that this leaky cap was so corroded that one of its leads fell off. Anyway, let's turn our attention back to the mod chip, and one thing I need to do is cut this trace here. I just want to make clear that this is an older prototype board, and that Modsville has loaded his newest revision of his carrier board to his GitHub. So you will not need to cut any traces. I just need to do this since I have an older version. All right, now it's time to flash our custom BIOS to the Pico. To do this, first connect the USB-C breakout board using the ribbon cable. Now let's head over to the computer. Navigate to the Modshow GitHub, which I'll link down below, and then download the latest version of the software, which is 0.2 as of the making of this video. Once it's downloaded, head back to the main page and scroll all the way down to the Packing BIOS section and click the link. You'll be navigated to the BIOS Packer page, and here all you need to do is drag and drop the BIOS you want to use. I'll be using Sir BIOS, which I already have saved to my computer, but you can use any BIOS you want. Once you've done that, it'll automatically convert your BIOS file to a .uf2 file and save it to your PC. Now we can go ahead and connect the mod show to the computer. A new window should pop up for the Pico and now we can start dragging and dropping files over. First, open the folder of the extracted mod show file we recently downloaded and it should have a couple of uf2 files. The first one is flash nuke, which will wipe the contents of the Raspberry Pi so we have a clean slate. The Raspberry Pi will close for a few seconds, and it should pop right back up. Once it reopens, go ahead and drag over the Modshow 0.2 UF2 file. 
and this time the Pico will automatically disconnect and will not reopen. So we need to go to our breakout board and press and hold the boot button while also pressing the reset button. This will reopen the Pico on the computer where we can then drag our repacked BIOS, which again in my case is Sir BIOS. This will take a bit longer to copy over, but it will eject itself once it's done. Now we can remove the Macho from the computer and disconnect the breakout board from the Pico. Our new mod chip is now ready to be installed into the Xbox. But we need to solder a wire to D0, which is this via here on my 1.0 board. If you're not installing this on a 1.0, you'll need to check where it's located on your specific revision motherboard. Here, I'm just removing some solder mask so that I can easily solder into the via. Great, once the wire is soldered to D0, we can go ahead and connect the mod show to the header pins as shown, making sure that it is oriented correctly. Do not install it backwards. Then I'm gonna solder the D0 wire to this pin here. However, again, on the new revision of the board that Modsville uploaded to his GitHub, this will simply be connected to the pad labeled D0 shown here. Remember, this board that I have here is a prototype and not the final version. And that's it, folks. Reinstall the motherboard back into the Xbox, and we now have a Raspberry Pi mod chip running Sir BIOS. I have to say that this is one of the easiest mod chip installations I've done for the Xbox. Being able to simply flash the BIOS over to the mod show without having to connect via Ethernet and FTP the files over to the system, and instead just hook it up via USB is in my opinion much easier. I love that we can do the entire process through USB. I know that connecting to the Xbox using its network adapter is easy once you've done it a few times, but for those that are new to modding the console, I think this method of using USB is a lot more straightforward. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and take a look at the mod show's features. So with the new mod chip installed, as soon as I power on the Xbox, I'm immediately greeted with the BIOS that I loaded onto the mod show, and in my case, I'm using Sir BIOS. Now beyond that, there's not too many other features to speak of. We can easily load a single custom BIOS and be on our merry way to playing games directly from the console's hard drive. It works just like any other mod chip and is pretty bare bones, at least for the moment. This is just the beginning and we will be seeing many more features coming to the mod show in the near future. Anyway, the only other feature, which I've already spoken at length about, is USB connectivity, which allows us to easily flash a custom BIOS. I think you can tell that I'm a pretty huge fan of this. It's just something that I think adds a bit more accessibility to the mod chip, and for those that are a bit more tech savvy, it can also be used to directly debug the unit as well. Something not really possible on legacy mod chips. Now, in terms of features, that's really about it. But like I've said, it's not the current features that are exciting. Rather, it's what's planned for the future, which I'll be discussing in just a moment. But before we get into that, let's briefly talk about the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, did I say that I like the USB functionality? All joking aside, I think this is one of the biggest pros of the Macho. And again, while not super useful for someone like myself, the USB connectivity allows for easy debugging, which again, wasn't really possible on legacy mod chips. Another pro is the hardware itself. The Raspberry Pi Pico is cheap and readily available. This is huge as pretty much all older mod chips rely on obsolete chips that aren't produced anymore, which sourcing is not only difficult, but also expensive. The Pico, on the other hand, is widely available and very cheap. The RP2040 has become a very popular choice for mod chips because of this, and it's no wonder. It's making huge waves in the retro modding community with amazing projects like Pico Boot and Flippy Drive for the GameCube. Additionally, the mod show is incredibly versatile, supporting various operating systems like XBlast OS. And even more exciting is the upcoming port of Prometheus, which will unlock the full potential of the Raspberry Pi Pico hardware, which I'm getting to here in just a second, I promise. Just bear with me for a little while longer. And of course, probably the biggest pro is that the project is open source. And with developers like Team Resurgent behind it, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of great stuff come to the mod show in the near future. Anyway, those are the pros, but now let's get into the cons. And to be honest, I don't think there are any. I mean, we have a cost-effective, readily available, open source mod chip for the Xbox. What more could you ask for? As of right now, the mod chip is pretty much a DIY kit that requires assembly and some soldering, which may deter some folks. However, we are already seeing some nicer carrier boards like the one that Modsville USA made, as well as other folks in the community with their own designs. 
I suspect that in the future, we will be getting a lot more custom designs for the Mod Show, as well as fully built plug and play boards with the Picos RP2040 already mounted onto the Mod Chip, as well as a bunch of IO built in for future accessories. Which finally brings me to the last thing I wanna talk about. What does the future hold for the Mod Show? Well, I actually had a chance to speak with Equinox, one of the members and lead developers of Team Resurgent, and I can't tell you just how excited he is about what the future holds for the Mod Show and what it means for the Xbox. The Mod Show in its most basic form is just a simple, single BIOS mod chip like any other. But when you add custom software to it, that's when the magic happens. The Mod Show can support any open source firmware developed for it. Currently, Equinox is working on porting over Prometheus to the Mod Show hardware. This is what makes this project very exciting. Now the source code for the Prometheus GUI can be found on Team Resurgence GitHub. There is more than enough headroom provided by the Pico for this extremely capable operating system, which allows you to do a lot of very cool things with the Xbox, such as hard drive setup, EEPROM backup, VSC unlocking, support for CPU upgraded systems, and a whole lot more. This is something that I'll definitely be taking an in-depth look at once it's available for the Macho. Additionally, with all the available I.O. on board the RP2040 Pico, the possibility of add-ons such as small external LCD or OLED displays, RGB LEDs, and other peripherals also become possible. Team Resurgent is currently developing a few very cool ideas that I unfortunately can't talk about right now, but I can hopefully share with you in a future video. So, as you can see, the future of the Mod Show is really exciting, and Shellax, as well as the folks over at Team Resurgent, are hard at work developing some incredible capabilities into this open source project. The work that these talented individuals do is driven by their passion for the Xbox, and they dedicate a lot of their personal time and effort to this project. If you're as excited about the Mod Show as I am and want to support the creators, you can find links to their Patreon and Ko-Fi pages in the description below. Their incredible work is made possible by the amazing folks in the retro modding community, just like you. Well folks, there you have it. An all new Raspberry Pi based open source mod chip for the Xbox. A game changing device that has a ton of potential to disrupt the Xbox modding scene. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here. So check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today and I'll catch you again next time.